I'm going to discuss now uh, the different voicings I dis discussed with uh, Andrew Carroll. Uh, so first he discussed uh, the concept of playing drop two voicings. Now what is a drop two voicing? Well if you take an E flat major seven chord like this, you have the five here, third, root, seventh. If you play it in root position it's like this, if you play it in the fourth position you have the seventh here. You have root, first, second, third. If you play drop two you get this voicing. That means you drop the second note from the top. One, two, three, four, then you get drop two. This is a technique used in arranging a lot. And then if you go down the E flat chord, next one, you get this drop two here. Then you have the next chord going down here, E flat. Drop the flats, made a seven. It's gonna sound a bit odd. Then you might wanna play a sixth instead. Then the next one, major seven. So you get a more open sound. So if you play that again, it's gonna be, I drop E flat. Here I drop the, uh, sorry, I drop the uh, G and then I drop the E flat. And here I drop the uh, major seven. But I play a six so I don't get a flat nine voicing. So I play a six instead. And then I play the major seven and I drop the five. So if you play that with an E flat bass, it's gonna sound nice. It's gonna be like this. So you get a kind of open sound instead of just going. This is also nice, but if you want to open it up, as I said, when you're accompanying a singer, you can do it this way to get a more open sound. So, and then I drop the A flat. It's very nice. So that's a technique you can use if you want to have, like if you have an opening and you have an E flat chord like he had, then you can just open it up this way. Yeah, and then we discussed uh, two five. What is a two five? Well, it's a concept in jazz. So if you have an E flat major scale, the two chord would be the F, which is an F minor chord, going to B flat seven to E flat major seven. So as we said, you can play like this with a singer. Since this was more a ballad context, what he did is, is finding uh, diatonic voicings. And diatonic is sticking to the key. Here in this question is E flat major seven. So he would check out like E flat major seven, F minor seven, and then D minor seven, and then he would play F, A flat 13. A flat major seven, and then here A is not in the key, so we play a diminished, and then going to B flat seven, and then he played a substitute five to E flat. So he played like something like this. closely we have the chords of the E flat major scale is E flat major 7, F minor 7, G minor 7, A flat major 7, B flat 7, C minor 7, uh, D half diminished chord to E flat major 7. 
So first thing we play the E flat major seven, and then we start playing the two F minor seven, and then T minor seven, and then you can play A flat major seven with the nine if you want. And then he goes A diminished, and then he went to B flat sus, and then he went E altered to E flat major seven. So, and then what he did, as I heard, he played like a chord melody. So that's something you can think about in comping, to have a nice melody. Here you get contrary motion. This one goes up, this one goes down, and when it goes down, it goes up. So that's nice. And the voicings follow this. D minor, uh, D minor 7 with 9. D flat, uh, D7, sorry. And then you have A flat major 7 with 9. And then you play B flat sus. Which is nice, you just you have A flat and you stay on the chord, and it's uh, as Andrew said, it leaves it a bit unresolved, and then you resolve it with a substitute dominant E here, E7, E sharp 9 to E flat 9. Okay, what is a substitute dominant? If I have a dominant chord of the scale of 5, E flat 7. In this case, I play can play E flat 13. The seven and the third form a tritone. Three whole tone steps. Now, if you play a different root, no, the E, then you get a substitute dominant. This is also a dominant chord E7, and you can substitute this dominant because they have the same tritone. And this is a technique which has been common from the 19th century, especially with composers like Grieg, he likes it a lot. Others have used it too, Chopin, Franz Liszt, and so forth. And it's been uh, assimilated to jazz, and it's very common in bossa songs, where instead of playing the dominant seven, you would play the substitute seven. So the bossa would often play like... way of thinking he goes stepwise symmetrical voicing techniques. So if you have a B flat 7, you can use this scale. Which is a symmetrically diminished scale with a half step. Half, half, whole half, whole half, whole half, whole. Which is a nice voicing because you have the flat 9, 11 and 13. So it's like playing a B flat 7 with an E minor on top. You can also play an E major triad on top of it, which is nice. 
So if you want to experiment with these voicings, you can play like this sound if you want to. And then you go up. Uh... So here I can play like uh, third and just go up minor thirds. Because this chord is based on minor thirds. So all these chords can substitute each other. B flat minor 7, D flat diminished, E diminished, and G diminished. They're all part of the scale. But if I play the chord like this, it's going to sound like horror movies from the 1920s. So to make it more jazzy and modern, I use chords from the scale. And what I first played was this, but it's simple. I just go the diminished scale. I play basically, I take, think of it as a B flat seven. I play a flat nine, three, five, and the root. And then I go like minor thirds. If you want to go a bit more out, you can play here the G, and you play in the chord 9 flat 9 and 13. That's a nice sound. And you can use that for a dominant chord for an opening. Add the flats. Substitute dominant and then and what I did here is I open it up with fourths and this is a uh, E flat six nine sorry three six nine and I have an upper structure triad which is a B flat an upper structure triad you can derive from a major scale. Take all the chords. And these sounds go the fly, third five on top. And then I just went chromatically. Like a big band technique. So that's something you can do too. Just move chromatically back and forth. Mm. Yeah, so again, if I want to do an extended 2 5, I can go like, like he said, also with a double lead. And then I go like, and then I do a So again, I can do F minor 7 with the 9 double, go up chromatically, and then I go B flat, as we did before. You can then follow up the scale just. Or 
will just play the B flat sus. And then you dissolve it as I did, symmetrically diminished. And then you go to E flat 7. Where I play the altered before. So that's how you can embellish a harmony and make it interesting. I also showed you how you could start uh, Misty. Look at me. So what I do there is it's nice I have a minor third and then I can use this technique because I move everything in thirds. The symmetrically diminished. And here I just think like a G major chord with B flat, I go half step under. Here I go up uh, half step. Uh. So the way I think is like it's a G chord with a minor third. And this is the minor third of a B flat chord. And this is the minor third of a C sharp chord. And this is the minor third of an E ma uh, major chord. I think G, D flat, C sharp or D flat, and then E. towards the end it spoke more about uh, being more free when you uh, play the chords uh, using double leads so he was a lot in E flat so he could go like so he played six chords a six chord is the root chord is this and if you play the first inversion you get a sixth because you have a sixth between the lowest note in the voicing and the root so he went basically this and then he played double lead or this nine underneath is one way of doing it another way he showed me was like he played the B9 here yeah, he had a 2 5. I think it was like. Yeah, so it was 2 2. Yeah, B this way. Yeah, what was in G major? Yeah, first it was G major, and then he showed the three diminished, and then e, A minor seven, and then he went uh, e, uh, B flat seven here. Or D seven, yeah, I now remember it. And then G. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he went A minor 7. Yeah, he went uh, 2. 2, and then he went 3 minor 7. And then he went E7. And then he went to flat 3, 2. Yeah, so he first.
first showed a traditional way of comping is D major 7, flat 3 diminished to 2, and then 5, 1. And then he added some extras. He added, here you have the double lead. And then he went to, uh, this is the kind of voicing we had before, symmetrically diminished. Same voicing I did before, half step away. And then A minor 7. And then he added a substitute to domin dominant of the dominant in the key. And then he has the plus 5 here in the E flat chord to respect the key. D7 to G. So again it was G, flat diminished, 2, substitute dominant of the 5 chord to G. On the after the substitute you can do a sus if you want to do, and then again go sub 5, 2, 1. Then it will be 1, flat 3, 9, Substitute of 5, 5 sus, substitute 5 to 1. Yeah, so there's lots of fun you can do uh, reharmonizing harmony and creating uh, smooth voicings like this, especially for ballads. If you have a chord laying one chord, you don't just stay there, you do something like you did. a nice sound for the singer. So if the singer goes La and you move around the chords. And then this double lead voicing technique is nice. I go up this chord scale. if you do Latin style, uh, like for instance, autumn leaves. So when if you comp this, you can go like... So I just take C minor 7, double little lead, then I go down to F13, double and nine. Same here. B flat major seven, E flat. And here I double the natural nine because otherwise I'm gonna get a clash with the bass. So and then I can go like if I want to do a smooth leaning. Seven to six. Same time, it's going to be like. various techniques based on diatonic movements like an E flat major to create a nice comping moving line behind the singer 
We discussed uh, constant structure, strike, structures. We discussed substitute dominance. So in the E flat major, the substitute dominant is an E7 because it has the same tritone as a B flat. Going here, it creates a nice sound. Uh, we discussed double lead technique uh, to create interesting voicings. Uh, and I exemplified in the end, like autumn leaves. Mm -hmm. And you can also rhythmize this. try to do tombales with them. Uh, with a double lead. Okay, but we'll discuss that more in another video when we do more uh, Latin jazz and salsa. So I want to say thank you uh, for today, uh, for listening to me and Andrew Carroll from uh, modern piano styles with Adam. Here we go.